But uh, the fact is, in our lab, I mean, we have meticulous, analytical scientists who care about what they're doing, and we have high-quality work and high-quality research coming out of that place. In Trina's Damage, I want to ask you all one question. You know, in Al Gore's movie, this was from Global Warming. AGW, right? Okay, can someone tell me in one word why Katrina was a disaster in New Orleans? One word. Infrastructure. What? <laughs> levees, thank you. Levees. Yes. The result of global warming? It was levees. That was the only reason it was a mega disaster. The fact is they got the weak side of the storm. That's how you get the worst damage in New Orleans, you have to get the weak side so the wind comes from the north and can damage the levees. It was Mississippi that got the strong side and a 30-foot storm surge. They're not even in the news much of it. They're still rebuilding. They're just a total mess there. They were just wiped out. But New Orleans got filled like a fishbowl. And uh, in fact, the, the, the first hurricane special I was in, uh, Cyclone, uh, from National Geographic, well worth getting for schools and stuff, after my story on there, they had, what would happen, it's 1995, what would happen if New Orleans got hit? And they just went into the whole scenario of what would take place with that. So it was very, very 10 years early. It was the levees. It was the levees. It was the levees. Our favorite variables are measures of overall activity for the season. So we combine the strength and duration, or Bill Gray combines the strength, duration, and numbers, and come out with these. The net tropical cyclone activity, NTC, where 100% is average. So 200% is twice the average. A year like uh, 2005, I think, was about 285%. A year like 1983 was 32%. It could be that much diversity. They still had a uh, Category uh, 3, $2 billion hurricane that year. Uh, and that just combines all the factors. Then we have for NOAA, we use ACE, the accumulated cyclone energy, which is the sum of the max wind speeds every six hours for all the storms for the season or for a period, whatever you're measuring. And it's amazing, these are calculated so entirely differently, and yet they're correlated like at 95% or so developed. So a normal season, you have about the same number of easterly waves coming off of Africa each year, but how many develop or how those climate signals look in this main development region. And you have a year like uh, 1983, which was an El Nino year, no activity at all, not a single depression or tropical storm in the tropics. <coughs> Just four, I think it was just four storms the whole year. So that's loose cape, which is totally closed. Then you have a year, like 1995, this was long before we had 2005 that I made this chart, when for two weeks every single wave developed, I mean, was named. I mean, it was just storm after storm after storm, lots of stuff in the main development region. So things vary a lot from year to year. This is what the NTC, that tropical cyclone activity, has looked like. Uh, from 1950 to 2005, and the red is above average, green is below average. You can see this, there's this 20-year uh, period here, 25-year period. Now, this is where we consider reliable data to look at the whole basin. It's really from about 1944 uh, to the present because you started aircraft reconnaissance. We just simply don't go before that. Not that we trust all the aircraft reconnaissance data at the beginning, but it's just at least you can get a glimpse of what's happening. And you see these here, then you see this 24 year period. The dash line here is hyperactive. Above that is a hyperactive year. Not a single year of 24 years was hyperactive. Then we get 1995 and the activity just woke up again. We see this multi decadal signal. We see it correlated with what's called the Atlantic multi decadal mode, or other people call it Atlantic multi decadal oscillation, AMO. It's a signature that you do by empirical orthogonal function analysis. Uh, which I won't go into here, but basically you pull out these modes of variability. And so you have it getting warm in the main development area for a few decades. This is the signal, this is uh, believed to be driven, Dr. Gray, I believe we'll talk about this tomorrow, driven by something called the thermal haline circulation. There might be other explanations. Uh, but this is the time series going way back to the 1800s that you have Warm for a few decades, cool for a few decades, warm for a few decades, cool for a few decades, and we see the tropical cyclone activity mirroring this. Now the fact is, I did a study with Lloyd Shapiro years ago, that the sea surface temperature under the storm is not the primary driving influence for climate change. It's a very small percentage. It has to be what's happening in the atmosphere. Well, it turns out the Atlantic multidecadal mode is associated also with what's going on with the vertical shear. And here's just vertical shear, several decades, actually up is favorable, I flipped this, so that's weak shear. So you up, weak shear for several decades, which is favorable for activity, then down, and then up again. In fact, if you look at the 
Overall increases between these cool and warmer decades, it's huge. Since 1995, we're not talking about 2004, this started in 1995, overall activity doubles. Number of major hurricanes, two and a half times as many, not stronger, but more. Uh, Caribbean hurricanes, five times as much. October, November major hurricanes, ten times as many. Now, not ten times each year, but we used to have them during the low activity here, like once every ten years. All of a sudden, we hit this upswing in activity on the average of once a year to get October major hurricanes. And this was published in the Journal of Science back in 2001, got a lot of press, thankfully, because we were not saying this was from global warming, this was from natural variability. And there's other works that have come out, by Bell and Talai up at the uh, Climate Prediction Center, that basically he looked at something called the tropical multi-decadal mode. Very similar thing, and the, he looked, and if you compare that to the hurricane activity, he explained almost all the variance in the hurricane activity. And not that I expect you to absorb this one, but this, these are all sorts of different atmospheric variables that are associated with hurricane activity. And all of them just link up real tight to this multi-decadal mode. So it's just like everything is in sync. When this changes, it's a very global mode. When this changes, it gets more favorable. All these things line up, and that's why the activity changes so much. If you look at the previous chart, if you really look at it, you'll say, you know, it's a lot more active now than it was back then. You know, so is this, why is it more active? And you know, is it from global warming or is it from natural variability or both? And the battle is raging. But the problems with using this historical tropical cyclone database uh, is the non-homogeneity of the data. It's just not the same. It's temporally non-homogeneous, meaning with time you have new observational platforms. You, prior to 44, you only had ships, and they didn't always report, and they avoided storms. And, and you have then aircraft were kind of starting in 44, but even they constantly change. And they're getting better and better how they're reporting. Uh, improvements to land observations. We didn't have Doppler radar many years ago. And then finally you have the addition of the satellite observations starting about 1966, but even they're constantly changing. Uh, satellite coverage used to be far from uniform, and many of the alleged uh, AGW related increases or trend match these changes in data measurements. So they're sitting there saying, look at this huge increase. We've seen this in other talks. As yeah, look at how the data is getting so much better. I mean, anybody who knows the data, that's why I do not know of any scientist at the, I don't know of any yet, at the Hurricane Center or the Hurricane Research Division that believe that the recent increase in activity is from AGW. They just don't because they know the data. The tendency of some in the media, government, and certain scientific to attribute almost any increase in natural disasters to AGW. And this was just almost natural for them to jump on this. And the push by a few scientists, uh, starting in, 19, in 2004, and I won't say their names, uh, to announce the horrible landfalls were from AGW. I mean, they just got behind the media camera and said, this is global warming impact hitting us now. It was ludicrous. We were shocked at this. Nobody who really knew this data believed that. The science that he used, the least reliable type of data, the number of Category 5s, the absolute strongest storms, which we couldn't even measure well before, they started the sample at a low point in activity for two of the basins. So you started at a low point, there was a high point before. They started at a low point, you get a trend. You know, the global climate models. Now this is what they've shown them. They show that the vertical shear would increase with continuing warming, which would mean less hurricanes. The historical studies that carefully use reliable parts of the historical record find no discernible trend in any measurement of tropical cyclone activity in any basin or globally. Thank you very much.